I was just another dollar sign. You really just can't trust anyone. I lied to my clients, I misled my clients, and I stole money from my clients. It's devastating. Did you ultimately borrow a million dollars roughly from the Plowler girls without their knowledge? A Does million that sound right? It's pure theft. I took money that I shouldn't have taken. And just about everything that he told us, you know, we went along with it. Do you remember looking Tony Satterfield in the eye and lying to him? I remember lying to Tony Satterfield, and I remember looking him in the eye on many occasions. Obviously, you know, we believe him. Just because you steal with a pen or a stroke of a key on a computer doesn't make you any less dangerous than somebody does it with a gun. To understand that he was making these decisions and doing these things is, 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 is very disappointing. It's like a wound being open over and over and over. This part's tough to talk about. I know. I was going to get up. It's okay. Do you want to get up? Do you need a minute? a multi-million dollar scheme that targeted the most vulnerable. A high-powered attorney admitted to stealing from children who lost their mother and brother, from a quadriplegic former football star, and from two brothers who considered the accused like family, just to name a few. Some of the money was taken from wrongful death settlements and then used to fund a lavish lifestyle. That attorney's name is Alec Murdoch. According to prosecutors, this elaborate scheme spans back long before the now self-described opioid addict was convicted in the killing of his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. We follow the money and bring you the emotional stories of Murdoch's other victims. Call it in County, South Carolina. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. The world watched as Alec Murdoch, heir to a legal dynasty, took the stand in his own defense. It was South Carolina's trial of the century. Alex said a tangled web, and, and he, he's the one that said it, but it's very, very true. And this was as tangled a web as I think anyone has ever seen. Lead prosecutor Creighton Waters would know. He spent years untangling that web. Everyone who thought they were close to him, everyone who thought they knew he was who he was, he's fooled them all. At trial, the state illustrated Murdoch's motive for murder. The motive that the state gave was he was under such financial pressures that it broke him. He was hemorrhaging cash. Murdoch won large settlements for these families of the dead, disabled, and desperate, and then kept the money for himself, leaving those in need in the dark. We were following the money that Alec Murdoch was you know, spending and losing, spending and losing, spending and stealing, spending and stealing. Listen to that gathering storm that all came to a head on June 7th, 2021, the day the evidence will show he killed Maggie and Paul. That storm, according to federal prosecutors, started brewing as early as 2005. The once prominent personal injury attorney was the man everyone in town turned to during some of the worst moments in their lives. Nobody would suspect that that person is just an ordinary garden variety thief. So my mom, she would be there for anybody who needed her. And my brother, he amazing as well. Um, just the best older brother you could ever ask for. Hannah Plyler and her sister Elena were in the car with their mom and brother Justin on a hot summer day. 
The family was headed to sell newspapers to make a little extra money to help pay the bills. I remember the CD I was listening to was Usher. I had my headphones on and I remember I could see mom talking to me. I remember pausing it. That's when I heard a loud noise. It, it almost resembled a, um, like a gunshot. I remember mom screaming. I remember seeing trees fly by. I remember the smell of sweat and blood and pine trees. Their tire exploded and the Explorer rolled off the highway into the woods and it was a horrific crash. Mom wasn't moving or saying anything. My brother's seat had fallen all the way back into my lap, essentially, so he was laying pretty much in my lap. Hannah was talking, and I remember screaming, telling her, um, Hannah, go to the top of the hill, because I couldn't get out of the car. I was afraid no one could see us, um, and I thought we were all gonna die down there. So Hannah, being eight years old, um, goes to the top of the interstate and gets help. I remember seeing an 18-wheeler, and I flagged him down, and he, he pulled over. And after he saw that, he, um, I guess other witnesses pulled over too, and they, they came to me, and they rushed down, and um, that's when they called 911 and EMS. It's still, it, it's kind of a blur to me. But for her older sister, images of that fateful Friday their mother and brother died are seared in her memory. I remember them pulling them out of the car and immediately putting them in a black body bag. That was the last time that I saw. Um, that's the last image that I have of my mom and my brother. Just traumatizing. We had a very unstable life after mom died. The family picked up the phone and called one of the area's most trusted attorneys, Alec Murdoch. Alex was the rainmaker, the kingmaker. I remember the first time I talked to him on the phone, um, he was just very reassuring he was a person I would want on my side. Murdoch sued the tire manufacturer and car company and promised the sisters a large settlement. It was like, you know, we can't bring your mom and brother back, but we can, we're gonna make sure that you're gonna be okay for the rest of your life. He was like a, like a bulldog. That bulldog attorney won a multi-million dollar settlement for the sisters. We were never told how much money we had. We just knew it was, well, what we were told was a lot. Alex said that the court appointed a conservator for us and he would be in control of our money and if we needed something, we would go to him and ask for it. Only when they become 18 does the money become theirs. The majority of our requests were for things that we probably shouldn't have had to pay for as a child. I mean, even down to lunch money for the week, um, probably like 15 bucks that week. At the same time, Alex is plundering their bank accounts. I don't think there was anyone in our life as a child after mom died that was in our absolute best interest. We were just almost like breeding grounds financially for bigger fish. It was always about money. We were a dollar sign. The girls had no idea what was going on behind the scenes with their money and wouldn't for years. In 2009, Murdoch took on the case of Hakeem Pinckney, a deaf former football star. Hakeem Pinckney was um, a wonderful young man. He was an excellent student and an excellent football player. And there was an accident. Hakeem was headed to buy milk when just like the Plyler accident, the car tire exploded. And Hakeem was uh, paralyzed from the neck down. And he was a quadriplegic. 
So it was a horrible, horrible existence, horrible existence. Pictures show what was left of the car. It was a mangled mess. Murdoch sued the tire company and won millions of dollars. Days after the settlement, the Pinckney family would suffer another devastating blow. In 2011, the plug that was his apparatus to breathe and live somehow got dislodged and he became brain dead. Hakeem died, and the man the family had turned to in their time of need, Alec Murdoch, later skimmed up to a million dollars from Hakeem's estate and his family. Murdoch then used the case to talk about how important showing videos of clients like Hakeem during trial were to winning over the jury. There were so many clients who unfortunately have suffered catastrophic injuries and are unable to go about moving around the way we take for granted. To be able to show a jury those things instead of telling a jury about them, the benefit is unexplainable. There's absolutely no better tool in the courtroom than to capture that in video. The best storyteller in the world cannot relay with full effect the way a video can. And that was coming from Alec, a great storyteller in his own right. So much so that he went on to secretly pocket money meant for other clients, like Tommy Moore, a former South Carolina Highway Patrol lieutenant who was injured in a crash during a snowstorm while on the job. Arthur Badger, a father of six, whose wife was killed in a head-on crash with a UPS truck. Dion Martin, the son of local funeral homeowners who was also injured in a crash. And that is just to name a few. I sat down with Alec's son, Buster, to discuss his father's possible motivations. What do you think was, was driving it all? I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars. What, where did all that money go? And why did he need all of that money from that's, all of these different people? That's a great question. And it's a question that I ask myself every day and I cannot come up with an answer for it. It's an unsurmountable amount of money. You know, even if you look at the, the pill addiction, you know, that it's not all going to that. It's not all going to our lifestyle. I mean, we were comfortable, but we're not, you know, flying mm -hmm. a private jet to the Maldives you know, every two weeks. So it, it, it just doesn't, it, it never, it hasn't added up to me and it, and it still doesn't. And I can't really fathom where all it went or where all it was going. It seemed no one was safe from Murdoch's deception. Not even the family of the woman who helped raise his sons. In 2018, a horrific accident right on Murdoch's front steps. I just want to ask you a little bit about the Gloria Satterfield situation. Tell everybody who Gloria was to your family. Gloria Satterfield was more than just a, a housemaid. She was, um, she was a part of our family. She helped raise Paul and I from when we were little kids. As she was raising her own sons, Brian and Tony. She was a person that, you know, liked to joke. She'd make you laugh. She was outgoing. Everybody loved her. Her laugh, she would help anybody she could. She was a wonderful mother. She was very trusting, um, very honest. She was just a gentle soul. Gloria's sister Ginger and the rest of the Satterfield family had every reason in the world to trust Alec Murdoch. Alec and I went to school together. We actually um, went all through high school and everything. And I felt like that um, even in my own relationship with them felt like extended family. We trust um, the Murdochs with everything, and a lot of other people did too. He was a friend. Um, he was part of the family. You know, he was part of our family, and we were part of his family. One day, according to Murdoch, Gloria arrived at the family's home to pick up a paycheck when she took a hard fall on the brick steps. Maggie and Paul were sleeping. They were awakened by the dogs barking. And when they came running out, they saw the dog circling Gloria at the bottom of the stairs. The first call that Maggie makes is to Alex. And she calls Alex and says exactly what happened. And Alex says, I'm rushing home. Then she called 911. 
My housekeeper has fallen and her head is bleeding. I cannot get her up. Okay, and you said she's fallen. She's bleeding from the head? Yes. Uh, she's still going up the steps, up the brick steps. Alex tends to, to Gloria. And according to Alex, he said what happened, and Gloria whispered the dogs. She was rushed to the hospital with head trauma from the fall, and her sons met her there. So when she got there, um, like, hey, you OK, or whatever. Um, what happened, obviously, she was not able to tell me. Gloria died three weeks later with her family at her side. Um, you know, just the idea of her not being here no more. When she passed, it was just hard, you know, something hard to accept. Alec Murdoch, like so many times before, had already concocted a plan. And he approached the boys at their mother's funeral to set it in motion. He told us that, you know, obviously he would help take care of us guys or whatever. He just told us, you know, for us to put a claim or a lawsuit against him for the insurance company, you know, to get some of the medical bills paid and stuff. And then if anything was left over, you know, it would come to us. Came off as trustworthy, like a friend, like a family. Um, there was nothing, you know, in that conversation to me that seemed sketchy at the time. But it was sketchy. There were settlements to the tune of millions of dollars, and Alec redirected the funds into one of his bank accounts without telling the Satterfields. With Brian and Tony kept at bay, catastrophe struck for another family close to the Murdochs. Alec's son, Paul, allegedly drove his family boat into this piling, killing 19-year-old Mallory Beach. Her family filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against Alec and others. This time, it was not Alec's idea. It was quite the opposite. He was going to be confronted in civil court by this case brought by the Beach family that was, in his mind at that time, potentially going to lead to him being fully exposed. Soon after, the Satterfield family saw something peculiar in the newspaper. Murdoch had won money in their mom's case. I called Tony to see have he, you know, had, if he had heard anything. And she's like, hey, have you seen it? I'm like, no. I was more still, you know, no, there's got to be an explanation. You know, there's got to be a reason. There's, you know, there's no way that, you know, money was received and um, the boys weren't told about it. I don't believe everything that, you know, goes in the newspaper. I brushed it off. Like, okay, probably not true. They would never think to question Alex. He is the knight in shining armor. He is the alpha and omega at that point. I guess you can kind of say I really didn't have the courage to. But Tony didn't need to muster up the courage to reach out. Alec Murdoch extended the olive branch himself and exchanged friendly texts like these with Tony. Says, hey man, just checking in, been working on case and made me think about you. Hope all is good, call me anytime I can help. Hey man, I'm doing good. By the way, how's the case going? Just curious, but how are you? Finally getting some movement, still a ways to go, doing good, was just thinking about and thought I'd check in. Hope to see you soon. So he was able to tamp down the Satterfields and make them believe that he was working on their case. At a time when he already recovered the money, the entirety of the $4.3 million. To add to Alex pressure cooker, the chief financial officer at his law firm confronted him about separate missing funds. I told him that I had reason to believe that he had received the funds himself and that I needed proof that he had not. Received those fees himself? Yes. With the Beach lawsuit about to expose his financial records, the Satterfields questioning the news of a potential financial settlement, and now his own firm starting to ask questions, Alec, it is said, was looking for a way to get the hounds off his scent. For the first time in over a decade, it appears he was not one step ahead of his financial schemes. And then just hours after being confronted in his office. I have an Alex Murdoch on the line, caller from 4147 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. It's bad. It's bad. I checked the pulses. Yes, sir. <laughs> they are dead, aren't they? 
What was your instinct about what happened? I don't know. My whole body went into a sense of shock. I can remember basically sitting on the foot of the bed. I had lost all feeling in my arms. I couldn't really move. I, I, I was in a, a, a serious state of shock. Obviously, your first question is, you know, like, well, I mean, what happened? And then you, you, you just, I don't know, my, my body almost kind of quit working. I remember thinking like, gosh, I know what it feels like to lose like those two people as a mom and a brother. My heart broke for them. As law enforcement investigated the murders and any possible motive, all eyes were on Murdoch. Do you think I killed Maggie? I have to go where the evidence and the fact takes me. I understand that. And you think I feel Paul? I have to go where the evidence and the facts take me. The pressure during the summer was immense on Alex. You just had the murders of Maggie and Paul. And after the murder, he was trying to pacify and tamp down Tony Satterfield by telling him, this is not true, it hasn't settled yet, I'm working on it, I'm thinking that we're gonna be able to get some money before the end of the year. Then, on Labor Day weekend... The law firm confronted him. Again. But this time... Alex broke and came clean and said, I've been stealing money. Murdoch was forced out of the very firm his family had built its dynasty upon. Alex was desperate at that point in time. Supposedly, he had a life insurance policy for $10 million. And so he concocted, allegedly, this scheme where he was going to be shot and killed on the roadside. That scheme, intended as a way to get insurance money for Buster, involved Alec asking an acquaintance to shoot him on the side of the road. Murdoch even slashed his own tire to make it look like he had a flat and was shot at while fixing it. Okay, what's going on? I stopped, I got a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And I stopped, and somebody stopped to help me. And when I turned my back, they tried to shoot me. Oh, okay, were you shot? Yes. But I mean, I'm okay. The shooting scheme didn't go as planned, but either way, he did survive to tell another lie. He was caught, and the story kind of unraveled. I mean, I knew I was about to lose everything, and I figured he's better off that way than dealing with me. Murdoch admitted to staging the shooting, and he blamed a long, expensive drug addiction. It was all a lie. And he lied to you? He did. How did that make you feel? It made me feel horrible. And what made me feel even worse was what he was actually trying to do. And to understand that he thought that that was going to be some kind of benefit, giving all the things that I had gone through prior, you know, disappointed me. And, you know, I, I told him, he was like, I mean, you should know that, that this is not the way to handle it. This is not what I needed. You know, I needed, I needed you here, not, you know, a, a temp, a, attempting some kind of suicide stuff. Days after the botched shooting, Murdoch's firm released a statement saying he stole client funds. The Satterfields were shocked. Now realizing that article about the settlement they'd brushed off might be true, they hired their own bulldog attorney, Eric Bland. He uncovered that Murdoch stole more than $4 million from the Satterfields. So when I found out, you know, what Alex had done, you know, I felt, you know, betrayed, um, shocked, obviously, you know, because I was not expecting that. If I would have received a financial proceedings or settlement earlier, um, obviously it would have changed both our lives. He stole from these boys who needed the money, from Brian especially, who was living in the trailer with his mother. And that trailer got foreclosed on. If he would have given them a thousand, five thousand dollars, you know, it would have been a lot to them. And we would have all accepted that and would have thought no more about it. The whole thing was just unbelievable, just how someone could just do that to anybody, much less people that you treat and um, think of as family and they think of you as family. The Satterfield case blew the financial crime portion of Alex Murdoch wide open. 
it was the wellspring to open up to have every other plaintiff look into their files. Bland is brought on by a number of Murdoch victims to try and unravel all of Alex's schemes, including the Plyler sisters. Unlike a lot of the other victims, they did get their money, but it was with stolen money. Not only Arthur Badger's money, but some of the Pickney money. And that's the relationship between all these cases. Some get stolen from this person to pay this person. Some get stolen from this person to pay that person. It became a Ponzi scheme. When money was due one person, Alex would steal it from this client. And Murdoch lived large on those stolen funds. Bought Mazelle. Bought a ton of farm equipment. Bought drugs. Went on extravagant vacations to the islands, to Europe. Rented planes, bought boats, deep sea fishing trips. The lifestyle that they lived, it was a very, very affluent lifestyle. Murdoch was arrested and eventually charged by the state and the federal government with more than 100 financial crimes. Many wonder, how did he get away with stealing from so many people for so long? I think that there were people that knew what he was doing but are uh, deathly afraid uh, to come forward and confront him. You know, the rules didn't seem to apply to Alex. While in jail, Murdoch was charged with the murders of his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul, and faced a dramatic trial. He'd avoided accountability his whole life. He had relied on his family name. He had a powerful family, lived a wealthy life. But now, finally, he was facing complete ruin. His son was facing charges for the boat case. He was facing a civil act. He had an opiate addiction. The entire illusion of his life was about to be altered. At the double murder trial before Murdoch was convicted, he was asked about a number of his fraud victims. Do you remember looking Tony Satterfield in the eye and lying to him? I remember lying to Tony Satterfield and I remember looking him in the eye on many occasions. And lying to him? Yeah. Hakeem Pinckney, do you remember him? I do. I took monies from Hakeem Pinckney that, I, that did not belong to me that I should not have taken. Who were the plowers? Did you get a sizable recovery in the case? Oh yeah, it was millions of dollars. Did you feel like he betrayed them? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think he betrayed everybody that he took money from. I am sitting here today in no way, shape, or form I'm not trying to justify the financial wrongdoings. I'm very unsettled by them. I know pretty much all of my family members are also unsettled by them, and I think it's this very, very, very bad and very horrible thing to do to a lot of people who, you know, needed help. Both the Satterfields and Plylers are focused on moving forward, but they'll never forget getting caught in the storm that is Alec Murdoch. It's definitely opened up old wounds that I thought were healed, and now I have to relive and hear about the car accident, you know, and it just, it's, it's devastating. It is. And it's honestly hard to talk about. If I could speak to him, I would tell him, I do forgive you. Just because, you know, I forgive him doesn't mean, you know, there are not consequences for your actions that you caused on yourself. They're using their voices to fight for justice and help others. I pursued a career in law enforcement because I needed to help people. And I care because I know what it feels like to not be cared for. I know what it feels like to not feel loved. I feel like that Gloria hasn't died in vain. I feel like um, that God has worked it out for all, to bring all this out. And I think this is God's way of just proving to people that if you be deceitful and you hurt truly innocent, honest people, that God will fight for you and he will bring things to light. I want everybody to understand, Alex Myrtle is never gonna get a fresh breath of air. You can rest assured that whatever outstanding charges exist, 
either known or unknown to us at this time, that we will never stop pursuing the truth and we will follow all of the evidence wherever it leads us to, whatever end it takes us to. Soon after we sat down with the Plylers and Satterfields, Murdoch, who had already pled guilty in federal court, pled guilty in state court to his financial crimes, just days before the first of many more trials were set to begin. I agree that I, uh, I wrongly took all of that money, Your Honor, and did all of those crimes. I disagree with some of the narrative, but not the essential elements of the of the facts of the crimes. I am guilty, and yes, sir, I, I believe that I would be found guilty. I'm glad to finally be given the opportunity to, to plead guilty. I'm, I am happy to be pleading guilty to these charges for a number of reasons. Bland says his clients can start the healing process, and while justice is rarely pretty or perfect, it was served. Murdoch is still appealing his murder convictions. We will stay on top of all the twists and turns in the Murdoch case. Thank you for watching.